Hello, and thank you for joining me now in this segment of Women's Self-Defense. My name is John Riddle. I'm from Progressive Self-Defense Systems in Boca Raton, Florida. Um, and what, what, what I would like to talk to you today about is situational awareness. Now, a lot of people talk about awareness and different awareness levels, but uh, do you know exactly what situational awareness is? Situational awareness is simply being aware of your surroundings, what's going on around you, and being able to collect the necessary information to formulate a plan and execute it if need be. Simple as that, okay? And you get this by scanning the area, looking around at what's going on around you in your everyday life. So in order to do this, you have to gather the right information. You have to have the proper information being brought into you so you can formulate the proper plan to react to what is going on. Collecting meaningless information, it will be costly waste of precious time uh, and you, that you need to execute the plan. So awareness, a lot of people think when people are very aware of their surroundings that they're paranoid. Okay? There's no paranoia here at all. Simply, no matter what your profession is, you could be a police officer, firefighter, you can sell insurance, be a grocery store clerk. It doesn't matter. You have to be in a relaxed state of mind and a relaxed state of awareness. Okay, Always looking around. Just look around and notice things that are going on around you. It's simple as that. Uh, it doesn't equal paranoia whatsoever. You have to have little or no stress in being aware of the surroundings that you're in. Um, it's just make it your way of life. Make it your way of life every time you step outside the house or outside of you, the building into which you work, that you start to become situationally aware of what's going on around you. This is going to keep you ahead of the game and it will help you intercept anything that may be uh, happening around you that you may not want to be involved in. Color codes of awareness. We have color codes of awareness to help us understand the levels at which we stand in our awareness. These color codes were developed by Colonel Jeff Cooper. Uh, Colonel Cooper was a, a pistol instructor at a, a, a United States uh, government uh, pistol range. Uh, he was in the Marine, United States Marine Corps, and he developed these color codes for law enforcement and military. First color code, color code white. Second color code is color code yellow. Then we have color code orange color code red, and then color code black. Let's talk about color condition white. Okay, condition white is when you feel secure, relaxed, usually in the comfort of your own home. Okay, you know what's going on around in your home. You're very relaxed there, watching television, having to get together with your friends, and everything is good. That's condition white, we have no worries. Now, when the party's over, and everybody's leaving your home, or you're leaving the party to go home, we should switch right to condition yellow. Condition yellow is you're in a cautious, relaxed, but alert of your surroundings state of mind. You're aware of people around you and the potential for situations that might, might occur. Okay, so you're always aware of what's going on around you. Condition orange is you feel danger. Okay, you step outside the home, you step outside the office building or your car, something doesn't feel right. That gut feeling you have, the hair on the back of your neck, as they say, stands up, and something doesn't feel right. This is a condition orange. Uh, something specific has alerted you to a potential conflict. Now, from condition orange, we'll move right into condition red. That conflict now is starting. You're in a conflict now. That funny feeling you got in condition orange is starting to happen. Now you're in condition red. Now you're in a fight or flight situation. Fight or flight situation meaning I'm either going to have to defend myself because I have no other means before I can escape, or I do have an actual escape route and I can run. All right? So that's your fight or flight um, situation in a nutshell. You have to make this decision quickly and you have to carry it out. There should be no hesitation whatsoever. Condition black. Condition black is you're totally overcome by the stresses of the situation that's happening. Okay? You have no plan. You have a mental stall that has taken place. You are completely surprised by things that are occurring, and you have no solution to what's going on. Condition black happens, and usually we drop to the ground, we get into a fetal position, and whatever happens to us, happens to us. Not a good situation to be in. 
Now, how can we avoid condition black? Condition black can be avoided by training. Train self-defense. Train whatever type of self-defense you feel you would need. Okay, and train realistically. Don't just do technique. Train realistically and continuously. Desensitize yourself when you're in these different situations. Put yourself in situations in your training area. Work through them. Analyze it. Work through them. And then if it happens to you for real, you can tell yourself, hey, I've been in this situation before. I know how to take care of myself here. And it will work for you each time. Let me tell you something about the criminal element. From my background in law enforcement, I know that the criminal element, before they make any plan to attack you, they interview you. Yeah, they interview you. Now, they may do it from afar, or they may do it right up close. Okay? Understand that the criminal does not just attack. Okay? They, the interview is a selection process. They want to make sure that if you're the person they're going to attack, they can get away. I always say criminals don't have a plan B. They have a plan A, they know what they want to go for, and if something interrupts that, they don't have a plan B. They get scared, and usually they'll flee, they'll run from the area. What does he look for, or she look for, when they're interviewing you as a potential victim? First of all, are you alone? Are you walking alone? Do you live alone? Do you work alone? Okay, these three areas, working, living by yourself, or walking by yourself, you do become a very good potential victim. Are you an adult or are you a child? This comes into play also. Body language. When I'm walking, do I walk with my head down and my hands in my pockets? Or do I walk with my head up, looking around, my shoulders back, with confidence? Okay? Just that look in itself when you're walking is going to show people you have confidence in yourself. And that criminal element may, just may, pass you and move on to someone else. Do you have a physical disability? If you have a physical disability or an injury, potential for you to become a victim could be higher on that criminal uh, side of his thought pattern. Okay? Oh, this guy looks, or this gal looks like he may be pretty easy because he may be in a wheelchair or he's on crutches. Okay? So we have to uh, look out for that also. When they come up close and personal, they may come up and ask you to borrow a dollar or can I have a dollar? Okay? A lot of us don't like confrontation. We have to know when to say no, okay? The confrontation there, when somebody comes up and asks me for a dollar, I say, no, I don't have any money, I'm sorry. And I put my hand up in a defensive position, all right? Or I take both my hands, no, I don't have any money. Please, go away. My hands are up, but they're up in a defensive position, and I can protect myself from here. I can go into many different things here. Okay. Um, as soon as you produce your wallet, a purse, something like that that gives that subject uh, some money, that's when they strike. And all they want is your purse. All they want is the wallet. They're asking you for a dollar or some change, it's just a ploy, okay? So the best thing is get some distance from them, put your hands up, say, look, ma'am, sir, I don't have anything for you, please go away. Okay. Now, let's talk about four different types of things that we need to understand and we need to do anytime we see a potential threat. The first one is detecting. How do we detect a threat? Okay. We're walking down the street and we see something up front as we're coming upon something that doesn't look good. It just doesn't look right to you. Right? It doesn't have to be something that's blatantly happening. It could be something that a couple of guys are drinking some beer and they're rowdy and standing on the street corner. You have to ask yourself, do I want to walk past these people or do I want to take a different route? But when you see this happen, you detected it. You've seen it happen. Now, the angel on your shoulder, your intuition, your women's intuition, your gut instinct says, go a different way. Do yourself a favor. Listen to this. Go a different way. Now, you may be caught short. Maybe they see you. Something else happens, changes the game plan. Now you're maybe coming into a confrontation, right? You're having words now, or they're having words with you. You need to now defuse this situation. How do we defuse? Okay, there's so many different things happening right now. My heart's beating, it's racing, I'm scared to death. Things are happening, I feel funny, my body feels funny, I'm, I'm, uh, and that's the adrenaline inside our body. So somebody comes up and starts to 
yell and scream at me. They're drunk. They have a beer bottle in their hand. I put my hands up. Sir, please, leave me alone. I don't want any problems. Just doing this shows empty hands, and it shows that you don't want any problems. You're vocal. Your voice has to be loud. You have to project your voice so everybody around you can hear you and bring attention to you. Remember, the bad guy doesn't have a plan B. As soon as attention is brought to him, which he does not want, he's going to leave. Okay? You may bring attention to the police or some type of an authority, authoritative figure that may come to help you. Right? But your hands are up. And again, like I said earlier, your hands are up for protection. Okay? You can strike from here. You can do whatever you need to do from here. But they're up and they're showing you don't want any violence. And you just want that person to go away. This physical structure, along with your vocal uh, telling this person to leave you alone, go away, come into play together, and it gives attention to everybody. The next thing, to defend. If I have no other choice, that person does not heed my warning to leave me alone and go away, then I have to defend. How do I do that? I should have a pre-planned strategy. Okay? I ha should have a pre-planned strategy for some type of physical defense. How do I get this? I get it by training. I get it by learning self-defense. Go to your local self-defense school. Look up a school that you think you will like and you will enjoy. But I warn you, look at a school that trains realistically. You don't want anything that's going to lead you down the wrong path and not train you realistically. Train realistically in self-defense. Have a when-then thinking pattern. Not if it happens, but when it happens, then this is what I'm going to do. Practice it. In, in your training hall, be realistic with it, and always review it in your mind. Keep going over it in your head. When this happens, then this is what I'm going to do. It's called when-then thinking. Defend and escape quickly. Make it fast, as fast as you can. Defend and escape quickly. When you look into a training facility to go to, ask your instructor potential instructor or ask the instructor you're with now, do we te do you teach it this way? Okay, because this is what you need. Once the self-defense aspect is being done, you have to engage, you have to fight until you get that chance to escape. Whether it be run or just fade away, whatever it may be, okay, there's nothing wrong with running. A lot of people think if I run, I'm a coward. You're not a coward. You live to fight the next day. So if you get a chance to run, to escape, run. Don't, don't even look back, just keep going. Do whatever it takes to get away. There's no shame in it, no shame in running from a hostile situation. I teach my students this every day. No sense in, in, in uh, staying in there, defend and escape. Most of your physical confrontations also are not one-on-one. -on -one. Most of the time they're two-to-one, okay? It may be one-on-one -on -one at the beginning, there's always somebody else that's going to come into play that you may not see. They may be in the picture at the time, you just may not see them right off the bat. Okay? So remember that. You're going to have two to one, not one to one. It's never a fair fight out in the street. Intuition. Like I said earlier, it's that angel that sits on our shoulder. It's that women's intuition, that gut feeling that we get that says, hey, this is what's going to happen. You have to do something to change this. Listen to it. I call it our human early warning system. It's built into our system. It's built into our bodies. Okay? I hear excuses all the time from victims in my job that did not listen to their intuition. They did not listen to their gut feeling. And it's, you know, oh, he, he seems such, like, such a nice guy. I really liked him. I was really surprised when this happened. Okay? Um, she was referred to... Uh, by a friend, the babysitter was re referred to as a friend, but I, there was something about him I just didn't know. Okay, listen to this in your intuition, listen to your gut feeling. It's going to keep you alive. It'll keep you ahead of the ball game. Thank you. Have a great day.